What's up, guys? This is Ken. This is Dex. This is Eric. And this is Ken. And this is Alter Apex Radio. Hey guys, welcome to Alter Apex Radio. We are the band Alter Apex. This is our show where we invite you to come and hang out with us, hear what we've been up to in our band, as well as introduce you to new music that we're discovering, friends that we're meeting that are in rad bands all across the world. So hang out, you're gonna enjoy it. While you're here, definitely click subscribe and click the notification bell so you can keep up with our future videos. Also, follow the Alter Apex radio playlist on Spotify. We put all the bands that we feature on this show on that playlist. Tons of awesome music from mostly undiscovered bands. So definitely check that out. So like Ken said, we are the band Alter Apex. We play grungy type rock. Please follow us on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. We're definitely most active on Instagram, so try and head there first. So tonight, all the songs we're going to be listening to were mixed by our good friend Joe Marsh over in the UK. And um, we're super excited. We've actually featured these bands before. They are all insanely amazing. So we do have a new song coming out October 15th called Soul Directions, which also happens to be mixed by Joe Marsh. We hope you're going to dig it. So uh, get onto Spotify, hit pre-save, help us out there. We do have a merch store, so you can link from our social media accounts. Um, we have a hat, we have a hoodie, we have some t-shirts. Would really help us out if you went out there and grabbed something. We think it's pretty cool stuff. Quality is pretty awesome. I've seen uh, a couple things come in that people have ordered. So thank you to everybody else that uh, has helped us in that respect. So check it out. And here's a clip from our new song that will be coming out October 15th called Soul Direction. All right, so up first, we're going to be listening to a band, as Eric said, that we have featured on the show before. These guys have actually become uh, good friends of ours over the last year. We've been connecting with them quite a bit, uh, probably chat with the singer Andy of this band at least once a week or so. Um, I love their music. We all are fans of their music. Uh, it's a band called Attendant. They are from the UK. And uh, let me check out their spotify bio to see how they're describing themselves these days uh, they describe themselves as noisy alternative rock songs sometimes rowdy sometimes downbeat next single half-life that's the song we're going to be listening to actually uh, is out this friday so by the time you actually see this episode the song will already be out so definitely go stream it up let's get into it I know I almost I wanted to get through the whole chorus but like it's just like there's so many parts to talk about already sometimes I listen to some of these bands and I just can't believe that we're friends with them like <laughs> this is like they're so freaking good man like it it's um uh, yeah it's it's really fun to have uh just talented friends that are making really cool art but from the so get-go far, yeah yeah go for yeah. it Eric all the tones, dude, the, the guitars, the bass, the drums, everything is like perfect. Everything is so heavy, 
and mm-hmm. right there where it goes into that chorus and just like it is massive massive and mm-hmm. i think as far as we are on the song right now like i'm just i'm so stoked man like just to hear everything how it's put together um but that high note he does right there yeah the vocals is just killer man i'm just i'm loving it and there's um, something you know, about that 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 note that he hits and like how it gets so melodic right there but it drops into such a unique feel yeah, you just yeah. don't see that yeah. part coming that did it did it did it like it just when it the way it drops there is so cool yeah you know i don't know if andy's ever heard slick shoes if he was a fan or not and like if you know hopefully he takes it as a compliment because we always make that comparison but that was a yeah. band we loved i mean they, yeah. they were amazing dude i mean definitely big here in the states at, at some point in time um but oh, yeah. I, ever since you i think dex was the one that pointed that out and i hear that a lot but i think it's great yeah. man yeah no, it's it's totally it's it's totally perfect like what what i really love so far listening to the song is like i love how like uh how it comes in of course you know it's like that acoustic guitar and then it's like but also it kind of comes in on like, kind of like a minor key and it's like that minor key all throughout when it gets to that chorus it totally does like a little shift change and goes into like mm-hmm. a little major feel and, it, and yeah. it's like mm-hmm. and it, it's more like of an uplifting sort of feel or whatever and it's just like yeah. it's very it's very cool and it's very catchy yeah right I, I heard this song for the first time so a- andy sent it to me and he was like hey you know you you would you like to give a mix review on this for me and i listened to it and like i mean first off i listened to it and i was like how am i gonna like give me any pointers on this <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. I mean, like, this is like amazing. like and the, one of the first things i told him i was like dude right off the top this is absolutely my favorite song you guys have done like Same. it's just it, it just hits me man like it's uh and then he said you know in response to that like with how he wrote the lyrics and how he put the song together with the acoustic feel and stuff uh, he, mm-hmm. he feels it's kind of sappy and like it's like right out right in his vein you know and i'm like me too man it hits me like right in the feels like it's it's awesome and that big part of that is that note that he's singing in the chorus but i want to go back let let me bring us back a little bit coming into that first chorus those toms on that part the toms on that are sick just that little bit, I want to see if he does it again. Right there. Yeah, that was yep. good change. Yeah, that sounds so cool with the strumming. A big part of what's making that is that harmony too yeah. that he's pairing that he's pairing with that note there mm-hmm. and, 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 the lyrics. Lyrics. Yeah. and the lyrics yeah, the are lyrics like rad. you're it's living like, half uh, a life when it's not when your it's own not your own yeah i mean it's like it's awesome. those that's that's paired with like you know the major key and the and the and the what the drums are doing and yeah. uh all of that i mean it's just like it's got that uplifting feel so it's like Every time, every time I hear that chorus, you know, I start to like almost like well up a little, you know, it kind it's of a hits wonderful right line. <laughs> it's yeah. a, you know, one of the things that's, that's so cool about a line like that Bad. is that it's so thought provoking. Mm-hmm. You know, you're living half a life when it's not your own. And it's also the type of line that you could probably go around to like four different guys like here on this call. And we would all have a different interpretation of what that might mean but that's right. actually like that that's part of the quality of a line like that you know it's not so direct that it's like no thought needed you know to interpret what it's saying but it's just yeah it's it's 
it's very good. I was almost wondering if he's doing like a like a ooh with his voice to go with that guitar note that's happening or if it's another guitar note it's probably another guitar note but it almost it, sounded it, like a voice thing happening there it's you can see that it sounds sure. like an ebo do you yeah. remember this yeah yeah we used one of those on an old song back in the day yeah let me let me go on back the, and let's listen live. to that part a little bit yeah, yeah. on the live we we used an ebo yeah that was in our old pop punk band that's why we're referencing <laughs> stuff like slick shoes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking beautiful. It's definitely in the headphones, all these things going on. Yeah. Yeah, that was beautiful. <laughs> like when it comes in on those parts, the da 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 da, that yeah. sounds monstrous. Like the way Joe like built that bass tone with that guitar tone, it just sounds like one big like monstrous roar of guitar sound happening on that part. It's freaking awesome it's so awesome and it like it's almost like the guitar tone itself has like a melancholic kind of feel mm -hmm. i don't I, like i mean i, I don't I, I might be like I, I don't feel like i'm reaching too hard there actually i feel like that guitar mm -hmm. tone itself it just like there's something open and just kind of droney about it yeah it's, it's dark. awesome yeah it, yeah it has it's, a dark it's dark tone. it's it's mm -hmm. not it's not a very bright tone like it just sort of sounds like sort of like an old like Marshall like uh, like a, like a plexi or something like that you know there's like really not like a whole lot of like gain thrown on it you know it's a, it's just a very dark tone. It's one of those, I mean, like like most songs like the bass is what's making it really huge too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Although it's it's kind of like what we were talking about even recently with some of our stuff, like at different times, how they mix the bass is a little more like a silhouette. Like not every listener is like cueing into the fact, oh, the bass there, but like the bass is what is like really making that part gigantic. Mm -hmm. Let's go back coming out of that, if I can find it, like coming out of that middle part. Cause this part's super cool too when they I bring like it when down. It the clean picking. Yeah. That uh, the rim the shot there. It, yeah. yeah, dude. When that change is sick. So damn good. Another thing I really, really love, and I, I've brought this up before, is uh, like like British vocalists tend to try to like hide their Britishness and, and mm -hmm. sound more American. And American vocalists, like you can look at like Billy Joe Armstrong from Green Day, he he tends to try to sound British. Yeah, you know, like when he sings, you know. But I love like with the tendon. I mean, he, I I just hear the so accent, <laughs> and, and it's it's amazing. I like it's it. almost like we should say slick shoes sounds like him. Yeah. 
Absolutely. Really? Because, <laughs> because like, mm-hmm. because that, that, that was the punk thing, right? Like, I mean, punk, you know, like some of the biggest punk sound originated in that area and singers were just singing with their accent. And so it got mimicked over here when we started right. creating punk music. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you've got like the Clash, you've got like the Sex Pistols and stuff like, and you know, those those older bands, you know, I totally influenced, you know, a lot of like the American American punks and it just sort of like became so natural kids, to Yeah, the kids just picking up a microphone wanting to sing punk felt like they had to do that, like yeah. to make right. it sound punk. <laughs> All right, you know. Like... <laughs> Uh, that's that's a that's a really cool point and yeah it's uh yeah it's interesting man like because his voice does sound a hell of a lot similar to the singer that we're always referencing with slick shoes and slick shoes even did some stuff later in their career that was less straight ahead like fast punk and much more melodic almost to the point where you could hear like you know a song like this existing on one of their albums absolutely yeah but that was such a good song man and like it's funny because like I, I try to pin down a favorite track by attendant and i'm like oh yeah this is my favorite and then i'm like oh wait but what about bootlicker oh yeah but wait yeah bootlicker is badass like, yeah. don't bite yeah. don't bite these killer like do mm-hmm. all all of their stuff that they have out is just amazing man i just mm-hmm. i can't wait to yeah. hear more and more for sure yeah. yeah i hope someday man someday like you know if in the next 10 years like you know some of these friends that we've made if, if the music can take off to a point where we can actually connect in person that'd just be such a beautiful thing i mean this i mean that's not to take away from the fact that like this is already a really beautiful thing that's happened like this right. this all these like connections and friendships and this like i mean we genuinely enjoy their art and it's so cool that they like what we're doing too and that we get to to connect on this level I mean, really, that's that's a silver lining of the pandemic. You know, the pandemic's been so hard for everybody and it's been hard for the world. But like this is definitely a silver lining from it because we, yeah, we wouldn't be sure. doing this without it. But but yeah, congratulations, attendant. I think this track's probably going to be freaking huge for you guys. I mean, you, you definitely deserve it. You've outdone yourselves. And uh, as you can tell, we we're all fans. So keep doing what you're doing. And congrats. So yeah, up next we have uh, Trust Fall by our friends Nights Like Thieves. So we did feature them on a, a episode uh, not too long ago. But um, if any of you haven't seen it, just a little bit of background. Uh, they're a band from San Diego, California. Um, good friends of ours, uh, Mario and I go way back to uh, our kid years. Um, he actually lived in Albuquerque for a lot of years. Uh, we played in a band together for a lot of years. Uh, we've just been friends since, so since we were teenagers and, um, they've been absolutely killing it out there in San Diego. Um, the song, you know, they've been through some lineup changes and stuff, but I think they pretty have a a pretty solid foundation now. Um, and, and, and they're just, they're an amazing band, man. I mean, just Mario is such a good songwriter, such a good musician. And it looks like he really found some, some really good people to come in and like contribute uh, with this new lineup too, that they're kind of just all really putting in um, to make this band great. So um, again, another amazing track mixed by Joe. Um, so let's get into Trustfall.
this is so freaking catchy like every part sounds like a chorus like every yeah. every yeah. part sounds like a chorus it's just like and then when he hits the actual chorus i was like what this is crazy our friends are like ridiculously talented man yeah I, dude, I love all the like bass fills and stuff. Like, like the yeah, bass is up on so those. good in this, dude. Yeah, killer. I, I, I didn't even cue into it, so I'm gonna have to like start listening to that for the rest of the the song. I mean, because we always <laughs> we we always cue into like individual parts. Like, I'm thinking of song vibe and like melody writing and stuff. And like, I can't think. Uh, um, like the, his stuff, Mario's stuff, reminds me of Hot Rod Circuit a lot. Like that, yeah, yeah, I see that. Th- that golden, it was a golden era, you know, tons of great emo slash pop punk bands, you know, Hot Rod Circuit, mm-hmm. Armor for Sleep. And like, I mean, if it was, if this was like 2001, then this band would definitely be on, um, what was that label that Armor for Sleep was on, man? and uh, e- i think equal vision or yes equal vision? yeah they would be mm-hmm. they would be on equal vision records and they would be blowing the hell up they would have yeah. an end cap at best buy like <laughs> <laughs> yeah it'd be They're on tour just... with uh armor for sleep hawthorne heights <laughs> night oh, yeah, like they'd, yeah. be, they'd yep. be on yeah yeah i mean mario has, has certainly i mean he's been he's been playing this type of music since we played it you know back in the mm-hmm. day and obviously he has just gotten insanely better and better at it better and but, better yeah uh, but it just has really captured that moment in time when this stuff was freaking huge it should be huge yeah. now like it's just you know mm-hmm. that's the way music kind of goes but it's uh it's it's really good and for us like when i hear it it's still huge like and that, and, yeah, and that right. it's also a testament to like the 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 genuine love for a style that can really take root in your in your heart artistically you know that like this many years later he's still tweaking and perfecting his craft on that style because it's just you know it's a style he fell in love with man it, it it's what it's his language you know yeah it's awesome. well, and, and you know i mean mario is probably the world's biggest at the driving fan and yeah. you can you can hear that in everything he does i mean it's, he has been he's loved that band since he first heard him when we were in a band together way back when, um, but I mean, absolutely nothing wrong with that, dude. I mean, he just takes that and molds it to something to make it his own. Well, I see it. This is a compliment coming from me that like for, for me, he makes that palatable because at the drive-in was never all that palatable for me. Like I couldn't really get into it because it I guess the, the way that the way that Mario weaves, weaves a, a, a much more um poppy hook into everything he's doing Mm -hmm. like makes that style something that i can kind of hang with a little more at the drive-in was kind of a little too weird for me like it just kind of i i I couldn't there were some songs that i liked but um yeah i'm not trying to be blasphemous or anything (laughs) but but i uh, I love what Mario's doing. <laughs> but exactly what you're saying is how I feel about the Mars Volta because I, you know, mm-hmm. I started mm-hmm. without the drive in and I absolutely love those guys. But the Mars Volta is way too weird for me, dude. I can't make it through a whole album of those guys. Mm-hmm. It is just like, you know, maybe you got to be doing heroin or something. I don't know. <laughs> maybe <laughs> I, we I should just, try that someday. Maybe get, we yeah. should try that. <laughs> Next episode. <laughs> Yeah, Mario's high harmonies are fucking ridiculous. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know, like it was like, what? How does it? How do you sing that, man? Dude, so just <laughs> a couple of days ago, we had gone to the store. We were on our way back, and I had my phone on shuffle. And the very first um, "Left Unsaid" song that we had Mario singing, the majority of it um, came on, and it's unreal how far he's come as a vocalist dude like mm-hmm. it is just i mean and it was he was good back then you know he had bands that he fronted prior to even playing with us but um 
he is it, yeah he's got it down now for sure sounds great awesome it's killer That riff is awesome. Yeah. What? Are you ashamed of? It's like, I mean, sometimes I'm listening to this stuff and I'm like, like, how come like all our friends write so many cool parts in a song that it makes me feel bad? Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm I'm figuring like, you know, if I can come up with four cool parts, we've got a song. <laughs> but like i think we're on like 12 like so far you know like we're like all these changes and stuff i'm like come on man i guess that's when you know it's really good like i was talking to my friend pasquale the other day and like <laughs> we were talking about somebody else's music and like how it just kind of makes us a little mad that they're so good <laughs> and he and he's like if i'm not like a little bit jealous or mad then it's probably not that good <laughs> You know, but yeah, when I'm listening to this stuff, like there's like times of jealousy and anger in like the coolest way, you know, it's just like, holy shit, dude. Like, how are you doing all that, man? <laughs> like, I don't have time to do that. <laughs> yeah, it shreds. Cool changes, man. Well, yeah, we also got to take a moment to comment great. on how uh, goddamn good that mix was, too, dude. Dude, yeah. right? Jesus. Yeah. <laughs> Joe, Joe, Joe freaking knocked, I mean, he knocks everything out of the park, but, uh, you know, what, what he's done for these guys, too, just sounds incredible. Yeah, it does. There's so many elements, too, you know, like with them, they obviously took the same approach that we've taken with Joe and you know we didn't have the the fortune of of going in and tracking with him that would be really fun but we've tracked on our own and sent tracks over there um when I'm listening to that song I'm thinking gosh there's a lot of tracks here uh, like there's there's a lot of vocal tracks going on a lot of different guitar stuff happening it's like ambient stuff and uh yeah, like it gives me anxiety to even imagine being a mix engineer loading stuff like that into mm -hmm. my my DAW and like being like I got to make this like come together. But Joe, yeah, you you kill it, dude. And uh, I mean, congrats, nights like these. Congrats, Joe Marsh. That song was badass and uh, incredibly badass. What I, they've got some more to come, yeah. right, Eric? Don't they have some, a few more tunes that they had mixed at that same time? They're going to be releasing yeah i think i think they have like a bunch i think marius at one point said that they had like a, a whole other ep or something that like they were sitting on 
Um, cool. I'm not sure if these ones are from that or, um, but yeah, I'm sure they're going to be dropping stuff all the time now. Yeah. So, so far we've featured Attendant and Nights Like Thieves, both killer bands. Go and search them on Spotify, follow them, listen to all their stuff. Uh, congrats, Nights Like Thieves, killer song, Mario. This stuff is like just getting better and better. And uh, you should be really proud of what you've done, man. It's it's badass. So congrats. All right. So up next, we've got another band that was also mixed by the amazing Joe Marsh. And so uh, we're really excited to be pairing these three songs uh, in one episode because, uh, you know, we are also getting to hear the amazing mixing talent of, of Joe. Um, but this band is another band we've been following and connecting with for a bit now. We featured them uh, a couple times before, actually, on the show. Um, they write amazing songs. The band is called Kite Thief. And uh, on their Spotify, they, they explain their style as a five-piece alt-rock progressive metal band from Bristol, UK joyously brimming with angular riffs, catchy choruses, and a ballsy rhythm section. And uh, like, I'm just super impressed with every track that these guys put out, how they seem to be outdoing themselves. And um, in particular, like, I mean, the band is obviously like very, very good. Everyone is so proficient on their instruments, but the vocalist, I feel like I could hear her growth like in leaps and bounds with every song. And this one's no exception. Um, let's get into the tune Hindsight by Kite Thief. And this song actually is releasing uh, just a few days before this episode is going to drop. So when this episode's out, the song has just come out. So go stream the hell out of it on Spotify. Support these guys. Here's the song Hindsight by Kite Thief. As a warning, yeah. one of us should have left. Took the sign as oh. a calling. We didn't know the depth, the need to outdo each other. Two insecure egos. You wouldn't let your image falter when all I needed was to hear you say you wanted me. I need validity, the constant jealousy. Nice. Eight to That's cool. These guys are so <laughs> fucking good. They're so good. Like that little, um, there's so much. I, I know that like uh, we, we ran through so much that there's so much to talk about. I almost want to go back and listen to it all again. But like um, that intro was monstrous. Lots of cool energy. I thought it was cool how they were using like kind of like how where, where a band would normally put in like a guitar part, like a high guitar part to add definition or interest coming into the song. They were using a vocal loop in the background. Did you guys hear that? Yeah, yeah, I caught on that. I thought that was really cool. And then that little glitch part, I was wondering if that, that was, was a Joe, that. if that was a Joe thing. I didn't yeah, know if he would, if he put that in or if they they did. <laughs> but that that, did, 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 that was sick. Yeah, I liked that too, dude. It's like uh, so. This one took me by surprise. Like it, it is good, and oh my <clears> gosh, <throat> she's such a good singer, dude. Oh, shit. <laughs> right? <laughs> yeah, but you know the the last one we listened to, I don't, I don't remember the name of the track. Um, it, it's it's killer, but it it almost had more of a new metal ish, like almost like a mud vein ish type mm -hmm. riff to yes. it. Yes. Yes. Um, like like yeah, this is um. This is definitely just more 
um, rock just kind of driving um, in your face, you know, just. It's, it's kind of cool. Like, did you even yeah. hear though after the chorus, like how they did that? That dude, yeah. dude, dude. Well, that's it's almost we, like what's ending. coming yeah. later, you know? Yeah. Like yeah. They, they're, they're really good at inserting that stuff and blending those styles. Now I'm going to say something that, I mean, is obviously a fucking huge compliment. When she comes in to that verse, I feel like it sounds like fucking Adele singing with a metal band. Like, I think it like, it's, it's like so cool. Like how she's singing and like all the, the little runs she's doing and all the vibe that she's bringing. She sings like so pretty and so soft. And then she gets aggressive too. Like she, she's got, a, got it all. Like it's, yeah, it's great. Super good. Um, yeah. Let's let's see if we can bring it back just a little bit. Hear that chorus one more time. So good. You guys hear what I'm saying? Like about Adele? Yeah, actually, no. <laughs> Equal game must end pain was played never be mine I did my best to move on to one who believed my time but opposite lots of cool guitar stuff yeah. Yeah, I'm queuing in on a lot of that I love that part. I love that part. Like what she did with her voice there to make it sound all snotty and like shit. Like when she said Attitude. with pretty lies. That was very cool. Check this out. And then the lyrics are great. They're so good. Like the lyrics are so good. Like the, the, the words that she's using to describe this relationship and like how it has this dysfunction in it. Like it's a, she's really doing a great job of like painting scenes mm -hmm. of like what's happening between oh. these people where I feel so drawn in by it. Like oh. she's a, a storyteller in these like, verses <clears throat> like yeah. i don't i don't i wasn't like really cueing in too much and on the lyrics but just the way that she sings you can sort of i mean with the attitude and the inflections that she uses like you can you can tell like what kind of like yeah. emotion that she's trying to convey so it's like mm -hmm. not even knowing the mm -hmm. lyrics to the songs like i i i get what she's trying to do you know and For get sure. what she's trying to say it's really really good that chorus too that it's about to come in right now that oh yeah all i needed was an honest conversation that's so good it's just killer let's get into it all i needed was an honest conversation take me home take me take me home home never it's a form of obsession you know i was not the only one that's cool There it is. There it is. Yeah. Okay. All right. Now that was a very novel way to end it. Wow. Was not really, yeah. Wow. Right. Wow. I was. Now they brought it down to that chorus. even lower growl on the guitar. Uh -huh. Sick, dude. I think that like we should probably listen to that one more time. <laughs> that was yeah. so cool how they did that. They 
bring it down. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. The tones good. there, too, like, are badass. That was so good. And there was a lot of cool shit going on in the background, too, when all that was happening. Yeah. yeah. Should we go for a third time? Let's listen to it again. <laughs> yeah, let's use the background. Let's listen to the, cue in the background. Man. Let's, let's listen to it again. Cool stuff. <laughs> It's like DJ stuff. Yeah, it kind of reminds mm-hmm. me of like Static X or something. Yeah, like it's almost like DJ scratching or something yeah. like that. Like yeah. it, very new metal, like like right. you were saying, right, right. Eric, like that mud vein vibe or um yeah, static X. I love static X. I could still get down on some static X. Wisconsin Death Trip. Yeah, man, me too. Me too. I would throw that on. <laughs> They're actually coming in a little while. No way. Yeah. We should go. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I mean, it's not Wayne Static, obviously, that they but I've I've heard that they got a good guy standing yeah. in. But um, yeah, congrats, Kite Thief. Wow. All of these songs are gonna be on repeat for me. Like I'm gonna be listening to these songs a lot. Um yeah, so congratulations, guys, on what you're doing. We really, really enjoyed it. We're big fans and uh keep it up. Thanks so much for hanging out with us, guys. We've been the band Alter Apex. Thanks for joining us for Alter Apex Radio. Again, make sure to look up Alter Apex Radio playlist on Spotify. You'll find all the songs that we featured on this episode there. And uh, yeah, just uh, come back and join us for another episode in the future. Keep a lookout October 15th for our new single, Soul Direction. Uh, It'll be dropping on that day. Uh, We're going to be doing some fun stuff on our socials. We're going to be taking over the socials over at Signal Chords with our friend Brad down in Florida. Um, So stay tuned for details on that. Uh, We have an exclusive that's going to be with uh, happening with Albuquerque Green Room, the blog, where you're going to be able to hear the song just a little earlier. If, uh, If you stay tuned to our socials, you'll find out how. So talk to you guys soon. Peace. We'll